There are few things more classic and romantic than a red rose. Add watercolor into the mix and you've just taken it up an extra notch, don't you think? In this video, I'm going to take you through my process of creating this beautiful watercolor rose. I'm really excited to be able to dive in and show you these techniques. I haven't decided yet if I want to capture some of this dying petal. Um, it depends on how the rest of the composition goes. I have it in here as a more regular petal drawn in my composition. Um, and this, if you are interested in purchasing this or using an outline, I have that available for purchase on my site. I will have that linked down below along with some of the other templates that we work with regularly. All right, first things first, I'm gonna decide what colors we're gonna use for this piece. Um, I'm probably gonna use, let's see. So this is Scarlet, beautiful, beautiful red tone. Deep Scarlet by Daniel Smith. I love it. So it is very tempting to use this. Let's see how it would look with, so it might be a little too blue. Don't hate this, all right. That's an option. Now alizarin crimson, similar color. It's a little bit more of the cool side, a little bit more kind of pinky. Also beautiful, though not my absolute favorite. See how it has more of that purple undertone? So this is a cooler tone, but you'd be able to get a very similar look, especially if you added a little bit of like a lemon yellow, just a touch of it that will help to give it a more ready tone. Uh, I think I am gonna use Deep Scarlet. Okay, to start, I'm just gonna do kind of a light wash. So all I'm doing is I'm going to establish some of these shadows. A little bit more. And then I am dipping my water, dipping my brush into the water and so now I have a damp brush and I'm just gonna use that to kind of fill in some more of this space. It's kind of like I'm doing a little bit of a wet on wet, but my first application of the wet uh, does have pigment in it, so it is nice, it's a little more pink. Then I'm going to clean off my brush, grab a little bit of this yellow ochre, and I'm just gonna add this to the very tips. Now that my brush is cleaned off again, adding a little bit more pigment. I'm just kind of tapping this in to that in-between area to help create a more even, a smooth gradient. Adding more pigment in and just tapping this in. Now, I don't know if you can see this. See that little bit of sheen? So this whole piece is still fairly wet as I'm adding this pigment in. And my brush is not very dry, so this is, or not very wet. <laughs> so this is almost a dry on wet technique, about as much as you can get with watercolor. And I'm just slowly adding it in. I just removed some of the pigment. It was just a little too concentrated for what I'm doing. By washing off my brush, um, with a little bit of water and then dabbing it off, so now I have even less pigment on my brush. And I'm just going through and bringing that right up to that yellow. I want that yellow to be kind of a little bit of an accent, but not too loud and noticeable. I'm mixing my green. I cannot, for the life of me, remember what this green that I'm going to put on the page, <laughs> put in the screen in front of you, um, what it's called, but I'm mixing it with yellow ochre, so one of the colors that we've already used. And I'm also mixing it with a little bit of, a lot of it, of our Deep Scarlet. So the main color that we're using on these petals in order to kind of continue to desaturate it. And then before this completely dries, this is a little too wet, that's gonna create a balloon. So I'm just dabbing off my brush. I'm going to add that in here. And I think that might create, I mean, it will create a slightly softer shadow. Looking at my reference image, I'm looking for what shape does the shadow make. So if I were to just 
kind of draw out the shape. I want to then create that shape with my dabbing motions into this pigment. Now I do feel like I lost a little bit of the strength of that red, so I'm adding a little bit more red to this green that I've not mixed enough of. So let's mix a little more. And thankfully this paper should stay wet just a touch longer for me. I was trying to smooth out some of these bleeds. My brush has almost no water on it and certainly no pigment except what I'm just kind of moving around. See this little bald spot that I kind of made? I don't like that. So I'm just going to kind of make sure it goes back in. So instead of working on this petal that is right next to it, which is literally touching what is currently wet, I'm going to move on to this next petal. I'm going to kind of work in like a back and forth every other style. And I will probably have to go back in and add a little bit more detail on this piece. And that's fine. That's totally normal. So starting in the shadow again, um, which I do just to ensure that I'm not adding. It's very difficult with some colors to pick up the pigment that you've placed down, especially if you like to use colors that stain a lot. So I like to start just so that I don't have to do what I'm doing right now and kind of go in with a lot of water to try and pick up some of what I put down. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush off. I'm going to grab a little bit of our yellow ochre. I don't know why I'm having trouble remembering what that's called. If I say umber or something, I mean yellow ochre. Um, so I'm pulling in that yellow ochre just a touch um, to the unobservant viewer. They're not going to notice it as much. I'm also taking some lemon yellow, mixing it with the yellow ochre just to give it a little bit more, a little more punch. So it's not something most people will notice, but it is something I do want to include. Okay, now I'm going to go in and add, there's not a huge shadow, cast shadow here, um, but I am going to add a little bit here just to kind of define this space, showing that it goes back here. And there's that bigger shadow here. And then I'm not at taking any, dipping my brush in any water. I just cleaned it off on the towel. I'm just softening that. All right, it looks like I need just a touch more here and here. And I am going to pick up a little bit. So to pick up, I have a brush that I just washed off. I just dried it on the towel and I'm using my hands to get off any excess water. Um, some people don't like to do this because of oils, but that's what I've always done. So I'm not going to stop now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and say not to do that one. That's exactly what I'm going to do in this situation. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So I probably will need to go in and add a little bit more definition, a little bit of a smoother gradient, bring this deeper color in here, but I don't want to overwork the piece now while it's kind of starting to dry. That's when you start to get things like um, blooms or irregularities. I'm going one petal at a time. I'm kind of dividing each petal into shapes to kind of capture these shadows so that I know what to do next. So this is more of a triangular shadow. And so I'm just painting in a darker triangle. Now, if you think that you really need help with working on the shadows, I highly, highly, highly recommend working on your drawing. And if you want to jumpstart your drawing abilities and understanding with drawing, you can take my free flower drawing mini course that I will have linked down below. It is free. 
um, and it's only five small lessons, but it really makes a big difference. I just again damp brush cleaned off. I'm just gonna soften some of these edges. Going with just a little bit more to help bring this petal to the foreground. A little bit more. <laughs> it's not in the foreground, but to bring it towards the eye of the viewer. And it helps it to kind of pop up a little bit without working too hard. And here I'm just occasionally going through and as I'm working as things are drying, as I have a moment to step back and notice things, I'm going through with the shadow and adding it in just a little bit. I'll continue to do this, continuing to look at my reference image as a guide to show me, okay, where does this go and how do I capture that? How do I mimic the shape that I see? Or do I need to change it so it makes a little bit more sense to the viewer? I want to step in just for a second to let you know that if you've enjoyed, if you're enjoying this video so far, it's not over yet. <laughs> but if you're enjoying it so far and you would really like to have more information, I have actually added this rose tutorial to my deluxe mini course series. And if you're not familiar with what those are, I don't have a ton of them up, but basically they are more in-depth videos. So it's kind of like the full process in real time so that we can actually paint together. So if you are interested in kind of having a little bit more detail for this course, maybe having a little bit more insight in how I created it, we can actually paint it together in the deluxe mini course. So I'll have that linked down below um, in the description box and or in the comment section. And I hope to see you there. So it is now the next day. Everything has had a chance to dry. I'm taking a quick peek at everything. I'm not going to like touch any of this, but just to kind of address some of the things I'm already seeing. So obviously this area is much more saturated than over here. Some of that is intentional, some of it's not. A quick glaze of the raw pigment, our deep scarlet pigment, over some of these areas will brighten this up. Um, and that is what we'll plan to do at the end. But for now, we're just going to continue applying the pigment down and creating these shadows and kind of the foundation of our pieces. And then we'll kind of get nitpicky as we dive in a little more. All right. All right, we're back. Obviously this section <laughs> dried really bad, but we will try our best to fix it and just see what can be done. So this area even dried a little too light. It has that nice green. It kind of gives it, I don't know, it could be kind of ethereal, but I think it's just kind of uncomfortable visually. Um, and so we will be fixing that. My size four round, I'm going to take a glaze again and we're going to bump up the saturation right here. So a glaze of our deep scarlet tone just to bring some more of the life back into this color. So that's a little bit more pigment <laughs> and water than we originally had, but that's okay. The hardest part with glazes like this, where I'm really trying to intensify some color, is to blend it in nicely with the more dull areas. Without losing what I already gained with the value establishment. Nope, I'm not going to touch it again. <laughs> I'm going to move on and just kind of 
deepen some of these areas so that was a glaze again of our deep scarlet so it's brightening that up but making it a little darker so it will come before this but it's still tucked in shadow let's start with my six so i'm just going to take this is whatever green this is i still haven't looked it up yet and some yellow ochre mixed together to help desaturate it see how it has this nice olivey tone and then i'm going to just go in with a initial an initial wash I'm going to take our shadow color, which is again just this green that we've mixed with the deep scarlet or red tone. So those two complementary colors and I'm tapping it at the base. I am going to go in, need to go in with more of a shadow tone later, but just having it desaturated over here will help. And then just bringing it over allowing that to kind of bleed in. So I think I'm pushing my luck a little bit. We're probably going to get a little bit of a bloom, which happens when going too aggressively <laughs> with paint that is almost dry and add something that's a little too wet. Yeah, well, let's not mess with it. For now okay I'm gonna do another first pass and some of these little details just to kind of establish some of this tonal value so tone and value color and how light or dark something is gonna be I want this to fade That will be where everything ends. I'm going to do one leaf at a time similar to how we did to the process we used for the petals. I'm going to kind of add in some of these some extra pigment for certain values and then um, some actual color in here as well. So I'm going to go in add some more of our yellow ochre, take some of our yellow ochre add it to the highlighted area and then a little right here and then I'm going to take I'm just going to take this section where the deep scarlet is mixed in with the green a little bit so it's not quite as bright and saturated and I'm going to so allowing it to mix a little bit more with the yellow than with the green because again if we include it with the green it's going to be very um, desaturated because the two are complements. This is this mixed paint is really runny right now. So I'm mixing another section off to the side because I just want a little bit of a creamier consistency um, and this is still drying. So that will allow that to dry a little bit more or some of the water to evaporate but I will still be able to get some of this richness in here without adding a ton of water to it again. Now I'm going in with our more desaturated color, our shadow color to out of shadow. <laughs> Rocket science, right? I'm kind of just going off my gut here. <laughs> I don't have the reference image pulled up at the moment, though I probably should grab that, especially because I don't know where that leaf came from. Um, so I do want to take a peek at that before I dive in too deep. All right, so let's do, let's do the big in. So this part of the greenery that comes up, so and I'm still just going over with layers of the green, so adding a little bit more detail with just the green. Spreading it out with a little bit of water. Dry brush to kind of smooth it out if it's still nice and wet. 
I want to show a hint of some of the detail that would be on the leaves, but not too much. So hint that there's veining, but not get too carried away. I don't need to put in every lump and bump for this piece. Not this time. And in case you're looking at it and you're like, whoa, well, that is not in my reference image. I'm kind of just going off the seat of my pants right now. Um, follow the reference image if you'd like, or just explore a little bit. And that's kind of, maybe I'm just in the mood for that right now. But especially with leaves, I feel like you can have a little bit more fun, be a little bit more expressive. They're not going to be a focal point. At least not for this painting. So why not just enjoy the therapy of painting? I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't want this to have too much interest, but it is one of those things that if the viewer brings their eye down, I want to reward them with something interesting to look at. I know where the shadows need to be, so I need to deepen this shadow a little bit more um, so that this petal looks like it's over and casting this shadow. So I'm going to be coming in here to deepen this with a quick glaze. and see how that helps to pop that up. It might be a little dark here. So I might have been a little, little zealous, but you kind of get the idea. So I'm just kind of playing around with it. I will tackle this little one, the first wash of that. Because it's in the background, I'm going to let it be very light. And I'm mixing in a little bit of our shadow color, even with my first pass, because I want it to be desaturated and to fall a little bit farther back. I'm going to lighten this area, see if I can get this a little bit smoothed out before that next alarm goes off. It's just a little, I feel like there's just too many lines. I know I'm the one who keeps adding them, but the more I add, the more I don't like it. So, just going to lighten this, grab a towel, and that is our completed rose. I really love how it turned out and I actually added something a little extra. I went back later and I added a blue background. Let me know what you think, which one you prefer. Well, I had fun kind of adding the blue background. It's a totally different feel than most of my other artwork. Um, I liked both options. And so I would love to hear which you preferred, whether you liked the dark moody background or if you preferred to have the clean white, kind of what I'm traditionally known for background. I'd love to hear in the comment section down below. A special thank you to every single one of you who has watched, shared my videos with those you think you might 
with those you think might enjoy it, I guess I can't talk today, um, or left a comment, whether it was encouraging or just kind of helping me with different things I'm having trouble with. It really encourages me to keep creating for you guys and just pushes me to do the work to get more videos up on this channel. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, happy painting.